In mid-March, just four days after Bill Maher's stinging commentary on the biblical story of Noah's flood, in which Maher called God a psychopathic mass murderer, nationally syndicated radio talk show host and Judeo-Christian apologist Dennis Prager wrote and published an article titled, Noah, One of the Most Moral Stories Ever Told. I want you to note that title because the first rule of spin is, turn your liabilities into assets. Thus, the Noah story is not only not the monstrous story of a psychopathic deity committing genocide, in fact, it's one of the most moral stories ever told. Unfortunately, the article itself betrays the title. Mr. Prager begins by answering some basic questions about the Noah story in general. Why did God destroy the world? When God saw how cruelly human beings treated one another, he decided that he would start over. Remember kids, even when you're an all-knowing, all-powerful deity, when you mess up, you get a do-over. Apparently at the expense of, of others. But the point is, you know, don't be so hard on yourselves, right? You're only human. Unlike the all-knowing, all-loving, all-powerful deity who kills virtually everyone in this story. Next up, why did God destroy the animals as well? All of creation, in the biblical view, was to ultimately prepare the way for the creation of man. Wait, was there an answer there? I'm not sure. I, I don't think so. But I'm told that was Michael Vick's favorite part of the article. Next, Mr. Prager answers the question I think a lot of us have. Isn't the biblical flood story just a fairy tale? Only if you believe that the biblical flood story states that the entire Earth from the North Pole to the South Pole was flooded, and that every living creature from penguins to polar bears, except for the animals and people on Noah's Ark, was killed. The narrative speaks of the world where Noah lived. He goes on to say, The primary purpose of the flood story is to convey enduring wisdom and moral insight, not geology or science. Again, I can't quite find an answer here, only an astonishing lack of clarity because Mr. Prager already answered the question, why did God destroy the world? But now it sounds like he's saying that God didn't destroy the world, only a teeny tiny eensy weensy part of it. And if the flood was just a local event, the Noah story makes God the biggest liar of all time for promising never to do that again. Tell that to the millions of people who've been killed by local flooding or massive tsunamis. Do you remember that promise at the end of the Noah story when God sent the rainbow, which in no way resembles anything like something from a fairy tale? It's just after the talking snake and the giants, but before the unicorns, dragons, and witches. Honestly, I have no idea from this article whether Mr. Prager believes this story to have some literal truth or not, but I do know that he thinks there are some very important moral lessons to be learned here. The first of which is, if evil becomes widespread enough, there is no longer a purpose to human existence. Thankfully, none of the genocidal behavior of the last century qualified for God's wrath. Oh, although it does make you wonder, how evil were these people that God killed in the Great Flood? For as long as I can remember, Mr. Prager has always said that the only crime worthy of death is murder. So were everyone but Noah and his family murderers? And how do you even have a society where everyone is a murderer? Aren't they all murdering each other until you're down to maybe one guy and his family? <gasps> Noah! And here's the point that all defenders of a genocidal god seem gleefully willing to overlook. Under no circumstances can you morally justify an all-good, all-powerful god killing children, toddlers, and babies. A god so powerful he can flood the entire earth, or at least a teeny tiny eensy weensy part of it, can figure out something else to do other than kill the babies, even if it takes a miracle. Unless, of course, you believe that the evil is somehow genetic. <coughs> or if you simply believe in evil, murderous babies, which is completely re What are you saying? I Hold on, I'll be right back. What? what okay, so apparently there are some recent events of which I was unaware that may suggest that I have been wrong about this whole evil murderous baby thing. I can't imagine it, but I guess in Pakistan, they recently arrested a nine month old baby on charges of murder. Here's a picture of him being fingerprinted and booked. So my apologies to Mr. Prager. Evil murderous babies do exist. Kudos to you, sir. Well played. Our second important moral lesson from the Noah story is God values goodness more than any other human trait. He values it, he just can't seem to emulate it. Third, God hates evil, and so should we. So the next time you're caught in some waiting room staring down some evil murderous baby, don't hesitate. Kill it, right there on the spot. Don't give it a chance to grow up and take its toll on humanity. Nip that sucker in the bud for heaven's sake, friends. 
You could be killing the next Hitler, Stalin, or Pol Pot, and we know God ain't gonna do it because he didn't do it last time. Our final revelation from the Noah story is that divine revelation is a moral necessity. God created man without giving him a Ten Commandments or any other revealed moral instruction. The only moral code was the one God built into the human being, the conscience. Clearly, this was not enough to make a good world. That's right, my friends. You just heard Dennis Prager throw God under the bus. The defender of all things Judeo-Christian just admitted that the God of the Bible intentionally failed to do that which is and was a moral necessity. His words, not mine. Right, right. This is a good one. I don't know if you've heard it. What do you call an all-knowing being who fails to do that which is morally necessary? I don't know. Immoral? God. What kind of monster creates sentient beings who can do unspeakable evil to each other and withholds from them the necessary moral instruction they need to make a good world? Those of you with kids, can you imagine doing that to your children? Not teaching them what they need to know to be good to each other? But it gets worse because after God knowingly dooms everyone to this inevitable moral failure and the world is filled with the evil people that God knew would dominate the planet, does God look inward and say, oh myself, I have totally effed this thing up, I have to fix it? No. Instead of taking personal responsibility, he drowns virtually every man, woman, child, and baby on the planet. Just like Andrea Yates. Remember her? She's the woman who drowned her five children, including her infant daughter, Mary. Just like God. Here is a love, best as the ocean. Love okay, I'll admit that sounds pretty awful, but then... God gives mankind the necessary moral guidance Mr. Prager talked about, right? The, the, uh, the Ten Commandments? Wrong. According to the Bible, from Adam to Noah, there are roughly 1,700 years. From Noah to Sinai, well, that's another nine and a half centuries. Okay, okay, that's a long time, but then God finally gives mankind the truly transcendent moral guidance that no other society in the world had figured out until then, right? Wrong. Instead, God reveals a disturbing obsession with how to kill a bull, or a goat, or the proper way to decapitate a dove, and very important, where to sprinkle the blood, because, you know, not everyone knows where to sprinkle the blood. Then, he tells us to murder all the homosexuals and non-virgin girls, and, you know, anyone who wants to fire up the Ankyo and listen to some Judas Priest on the weekend. If that's not enduring wisdom and moral insight, I don't know what is. Call me stupid. So how is it that a man who has taught the Hebrew Bible for 40 years clearly knows that God failed to do that which was morally necessary, and then instead of fixing the problem, murdered babies, how is it that he still thinks that such a being is worthy of our worship and respect? And what is it that could make people reading such nonsense think, that is such a great point. God didn't give people what they needed to be good, so of course he had to murder them all. That's such a sequitur. That, my friends, is the power of religion, and what my dear friend Robert used to call reasoning from desire or need. If you really believe this book is the word of God, you've got to square the circle and do whatever mental gymnastics are necessary to turn this genocidal crap into Bible gold. The good news is, if you've got the talent for it, and you don't mind defending baby killers like Mr. Prager, there is some really good money to be made. And it's clear from this article that the faithful will buy virtually anything you're selling, even this thoughtlessly constructed, morally foolish, blame the victim drivel. That's a big score! <laughs> when you think about it, though, is there anything but religion that could make an observant Jew defend the genocidal killing of babies just 70 years after the Nazis toured Europe in a genocidal rage? killing babies? Defend, what am I saying? He called it one of the most moral stories ever told. Really? Of course, Mr. Prager believes in magic and a magical God who can do anything. And I guess that includes murdering innocent babies. Myself, well, as for me and my house, I don't care who you are or what you can do. You may be able to turn the rivers red with blood or turn water into wine. You will never convince me that you can turn the murder of an innocent child into anything but an absolutely psychopathic act of unwarranted moral depravity. And you'll certainly never convince me that murdering babies could ever be an integral part of one of the most moral stories ever told. Seriously? Really? 